We're now going to talk about a few specific examples of trig equations. These are special cases. <clears throat> the first is the trig equation that is quadratic, quadratic in form. <clears throat> this one can actually be solved using the square root method. So we'll isolate the quantity squared, which would be cosine. Add one to both sides, divide by two on both sides. <clears throat> then you'll take the square root of both sides, and you will get cosine of theta equals plus or minus square root of one, which is one, square root of two, which is square root of two. So we have cosine positive and negative, which means, I'll write it down here, since cosine is positive and negative, we want theta in all four quadrants. So it's quadrants one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> How exciting. So first, let's find out what that reference angle is going to be. What is our mystery reference angle going to be? Question mark or gamma, if you like to use the, the Greek notation. <clears throat> All right, so we have cosine is one over square root of two. Adjacent is one, hypotenuse is square root of two, which means my other side is one. A 45, 45, 90 triangle. My reference angle here is going to be pi over four. We have to move this angle to all four quadrants. So first off, quadrant one. Well, good news, it's already there, right? Quadrant one solution is data is equal to pi over four. Quadrant two, given a reference angle, how do I move it back to quadrant two? <clears throat> well, my angle theta is going to be pi minus my reference angle. That would be three pi over four. <clears throat> All right, quadrant three time. Well, this one's my favorite actually because we just take the reference angle and we add pi to it. it gives us five pi over four. So I have one pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and what would likely come next? <clears throat> well, if you haven't figured it out yet, theta is equal to two pi minus pi over four, which is indeed seven pi over four. <clears throat> four solutions here. Pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. These are the four solutions in the interval zero to two pi. Keep in mind the original trig function here had no adjustments to its period, so the period is just two pi. So adding two pi to any of these values would clearly get you outside of the interval zero to two pi. Next example, which is still quadratic in form, <laughs> requires a little bit of factoring. So <clears throat> just to get this in a more familiar format, everywhere I see sine, sine theta, I will replace it with x. So I'll have 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 equals 0. We may like this because it brings us back to the those basic algebra days. So factor 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. You will get 2x minus 3 and then x minus 1 equals 0. <clears throat> Take each piece, set it equal to 0 and solve for x. 
So first piece, when you solve for x, you get x equals 3 halves, and you get x equals 1. <laughs> Remember what x is, though. x is sine theta. So sine theta equals 3 halves, or sine theta equals 1. <clears throat> so where is sine equal to 3 halves? My basic sine function, where is it equal to 3 halves? And the answer is actually nowhere because sine theta only spits out values between negative 1 and 1. Sine of theta must be between or in the interval negative 1 to 1. So sine of 3 halves is not true. It is undefined. So sad, we can't do anything with that first piece. Second piece, where is sine theta equal to 1? Well, you could write this as 1 over 1, but realize you can't have an opposite side and a hypotenuse, a leg and a hypotenuse, have the same length. That would be one messed up triangle. <clears throat> so draw your unit circle. I'm trying to find out where the second coordinate of the ordered pair is 1. And that would be up top here at pi over 2. Cosine is 0, sine is 1. Sine is equal to 1 at pi over 2. So theta is pi over 2. So all that hard work and we actually only obtained one solution. Theta equals pi over 2. But we did have a little bit of factoring fun in the process of getting there. Next example is not quadratic in form, but requires the use of some trig properties that you've learned previously. <clears throat> so these properties will never go away, I can promise you that. And the first thing you want to do is negative signs inside sine functions. They are able to be brought outside. Why? Because sine is an odd function. <clears throat> Next, your goal is to get all of your theta terms to one side. So we can divide both sides by sine theta. We can divide both sides by sine theta. And what is cosine over sine? Cosine over sine. That would be cotangent. So I get cotangent theta on the left side and negative 1 on the right hand side. So I have cotangent theta is equal to negative 1 over 1, because I do like to have a ratio here. Keep in mind that since cotangent is negative, theta is in what quadrant? Quadrants 2 and 4, because cotangent and tangent are positive in 1 and 3, so cotangent's negative and quadrants 2 and four. <clears throat> Let's draw a triangle. We have our mystery angle in the bottom left. Cotangent is one over one, 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 square root of two. <clears throat> and it looks like my angle is going to be pi over four. My mystery angle, my reference angle is pi over four. And I have to move this to quadrant two and to positive quadrant four. So how are we going to do this? We're going to use some formulas. That's what we're going to do. So first off, we'll start with quadrant two. The angle theta would be pi minus the reference angle, three pi over four. And then we'll move to quadrant four. My solution for theta, my quadrant four angle, would be 2 pi minus pi over 4, which is actually 7 pi over 4. The cool thing about 45 degree angles is quadrant 1 is pi over 4, 2 is 3 pi over 4, quadrant 3 is 5 pi over 4, and quadrant 4 would be 7 pi over 4. It's kind of cool how this works out. <clears throat> so the solutions for theta would be 3 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 
Once again, the period is 2 pi of our trig function. So adding 2 pi is not going to keep us in the interval 0 to 2 pi. It will take us out. So there's only two solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi. This last one, let's use a calculator. Now what you have to do for your calculator input here is you have to use inverse sine functions. So you'll have to input inverse sine of 0 0.4. Make sure you're in degree mode or radian mode, whatever it needs to be in. Typically you want to be in radian mode for this section. So if I plug in sine inverse of 0.4 and I'm in radian mode, it's going to split, spit out a radian measure of 0.41. It's going to split out a radian measure of 0.41. Remember, inverse sine is only defined for quadrant 1 and negative quadrant 4. So since in this case sine was positive, it spit out the quadrant 1 angle. But sine is equal to positive 0.4 in many quadrants. Since sine is positive, theta would be in quadrant 1 and 2. But the calculator is not going to give you your quadrant 2 angle because as far as it knows, sine inverse is only defined at quadrants 1 and negative quadrants 4. It doesn't realize that originally you just had a trig equation that was without any inverse trig functions. So I will want to move to quadrant 2, move this angle to quadrant 2. I do pi minus 0.41. You can use the pi key in your calculator, or you could use, in my case, I just used 3.14. So 3.14 minus 0.41 is going to give you 2.73. So theta, in this case, is the easy solution to get would be 0.41. And then the one that requires a little bit of thinking involved would be the 2.73. A lot of people always forget about the 2.73. Remember, the inverse trig function was only used as an intermediate step. It was not part of the original question. So I can open up all four quadrants. In this case, quadrants 1 and 2 were the positive quadrants for sine. Well, that's all I have for you right now, so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.